In this lecture, we're going to look at the phase change of water at constant pressure at 1 atm when it goes from a very low temperature to a very high temperature. So the y-axis is temperature in Celsius, the x-axis is energy input in joules. Let's begin at negative 60 Celsius. So we want to go from negative 60 Celsius to 0 Celsius. <clears throat> and we do so by heating our system. So what happens on a microscopic level when we heat the system? Well, on a microscopic level, we increase the kinetic energy of our molecules because kinetic energy is what's responsible for increasing temperature. So our potential energy stays the same from this point to this point, but our kinetic energy increases. Now when we get to zero degrees Celsius, a phase change occurs. So solid becomes a liquid. And the change in temperature notice is zero. So the slope is zero. So from this point to this point, the temperature is the same. It's zero degrees Celsius. And that's because all the energy input goes into increasing potential energy of our substance. And potential energy increase is what causes the change in phase. When we finish the phase change, we want to increase temperature once again. So once again, all the energy input goes into increasing our kinetic energy of our molecules. Because kinetic energy is what's responsible for increasing temperature. So when we get to 100 degrees Celsius, once again our slope is zero. That means our temperature change is zero. All the energy goes into increasing potential energy of our bonds found within the liquid and gas phase. So eventually all the liquid becomes gas and once again we follow a linear um, graph here. So any increase in energy will increase kinetic energy of our molecules. So once again let's review. So when the slope is zero we deal with phase changes and here all energy input goes into increasing potential energy of the system. No change in kinetic energy is, is observed and so the change in temperature in both cases is zero. When we talk about going from this guy to this guy or from this guy to this guy, the intermediate phases between the phase changes we talk about energy input that goes into increasing kinetic energy of the system because kinetic energy of the system is what increases temperature because we want to go from 0 to 100 and from negative 60 to 0. We want to increase temperature and not the potential energy of the system. So let's talk about one last thing. So when we go from solid to liquid, that's called melting. Okay, and melting, according to this graph, is endothermic, and that's because our final energy level is somewhere here, our initial energy level is somewhere here, so a larger amount of energy minus a smaller amount of energy gives us a positive number. So the change in enthalpy of fusion is positive. Melting is endothermic. Likewise, going backward or freezing is exothermic. Because we're, we're taking this number and we're subtracting this number from this number. A smaller number minus a larger number gives you a negative number. And that means freezing going this way is exothermic. And so it releases energy into the environment, heating the environment and cooling our system. So let's look at vaporization. Vaporization is the process uh, by which liquid molecules go into the gas state. So it's going from here to here. Once again, just like the change in enthalpy of fusion, change in enthalpy of vaporization is also positive. It's endothermic because we take a large number and we subtract a small number from the large number and we get a positive number. And once again, going from this stage to this stage, or from a gas to a liquid, which is called condensation, well, that's exothermic. That's negative. Because we take this number, subtract it from this number, and we get a negative number. So vaporization and freezing is exothermic, while melting and vaporization is endothermic.